<sighs> Hello, um, hi, <laughs> you probably know me as, I don't know, either Noddy or Tyranitan elsewhere, or BZR as I am on this channel, but today I'm recording this partly to test out recording stuff, but also because I am really hyped for some pretty big news. I'm gonna get out the um Hollywood Reporter article. Comic Con Disney XD sets Milo Murphy's Law at Phineas and Ferb crossover exclusive. Yeah. Phineas and Ferb are gonna be back. Yay. You have no idea how excited I am for this. I was literally giggling. In excitement before. Let me see. Uh, I'll read it out for you guys if you haven't seen it already. I'll provide a link in the description too. The episode will premiere in 2018. Milo Murphy, here come Phineas and Ferb. Disney XD is set to announce Friday at San Diego Comic Con that Milo Murphy's Law will get a crossover episode with Phineas and Ferb scheduled to premiere in 2018. Both shows hail from Dan Popemeyer and Jeff Swampy Marsh, who have planned on doing the crossover since the beginning of Milo Murphy's Law. Eagle-eyed fans have noticed several Easter eggs planted throughout the first season that hinted at the fact that Milo and his friends live in Danville, also home to Phineas and Ferb. In addition to Phineas and Ferb, the crossover will also feature characters including Perry the Platypus, Doofenshmirtz, Candace, Isabella, Belgeet, and Buford. We have always known that Milo lived just a couple neighborhoods away from Phineas and Ferb, but from Iron Mars said in a joint statement. We've planted lots of clues and Easter eggs in the first season, so a lot of fans have figured it out. But what they don't know is the story arc of Milo Murphy's Law has been designed from the very beginning to lead us to a crossover with all of the Phineas and Ferb characters. It's planned for early in the second season and we can't wait for the fans to see these two worlds collide. Milo Murphy's Law follows 13 year old Milo Murphy played by Al Yankovic aka Weird Al. The fictional great 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 grandson of the Murphy's Law namesake. Milo is the personification of Murphy's Law, where anything that can go wrong will go wrong. The series was recently renewed for a second season. An SFR rap production two years ago after 126 episodes, five one hour specials. Uh, but I don't think that's correct, I'm pretty sure there's more than five. Yeah, there's more than five, because like you got. The four in the fourth season that were part of the end of the show. They got the Alka Files that was after the end of the show. And you've also got Summer Belongs to You and Mission Marvel. So even not including the Alka Files, that's six. So yeah. And an original movie, but the series continues to air on Disney XD. Oh, sorry for being pedantic there. Povenmire and Marsh are set to announce a crossover at the Comic Con panel for Milo Murphy's Law that will also feature Darren Nefsey, creator and executive producer of Star vs. the Forces of Evil, as they discuss the process of making the shows. Also during the panel, Disney XD will show the preview of the upcoming one hour special Missing Milo, which airs at 7 am Eastern Time Saturday. Yeah, yeah. The thing that probably gets me most interested is they seem to be implying that they've had this plan ever since they created Milo Murphy's Law. Because, they, like I said, like Dan said, it was like they planned that this old big story arc in Milo Murphy's Law that they're sort of building to um, has been leading to a Phineas and Ferb crossover, and I'm thinking, what are they implying with this? Is this whole thing with the pistachios and time traveling and Doctor Zone, is this all somehow destined to lead to meeting Phineas and Ferb? Are the Phineas and Ferb characters going to end up in this 
crossover and they're gonna like are they gonna like uh, sorry I'm not really good at speaking are they gonna like get involved in Marley Murphy's law stuff what's going on gosh that actually reminds me um do a little bit of a plug here um I also do a podcast called the show goes wrong the show that must go wrong yep it's a podcast about Miley Murphy's Law, do it with my pals Goldie and Lala, um, and we discussed a possibility that maybe Candace, due to multiple run-ins with time travel, actually founded the time travel agency, so, and this, if this, if the story arc is meant to be leading to meeting the Phineas and Ferb characters, this kind of leads more credence to that, not to mention... We have, but yeah, it's basically like, this old Smiley story arc is leading to Phineas and Ferb characters being involved in this stuff, somehow ends up leading to the founding of the time travel agency bot, and maybe Candace is involved in that, and um, yeah, the and we even just mentioned silly things like, you know, the Fireside Girls handbook having time travel. Well, maybe that's relevant, but now that this is happening, I don't know, maybe it's actually something worth taking seriously. But I mean, I mean, like, all this story stuff aside, I just, I'm just really excited to see the Phineas Ferb characters again. Like, I've been enjoying Marla Murphy's lore a lot, and been really excited about where it's go, and... But I mean, still, I mean, like, Phineas and Ferb is just, you know, a show that means a lot to me. I don't know, it's, I mean, it's like, I guess it's like one of the first, the, I guess one of the first animated shows that I got sort of fully invested in. Which I know is probably gonna weird some people out because it's the same thing every episode or whatever they complain about, the people who don't like it. But it's just like, ugh. And I look, I'm just looking at the promo image that they have now, and it's just like, oh my god, I'm so hyped for this. Perry being with them is interesting, though. I mean, I don't think Perry is gonna blow his cover again unless that somehow, unless they do as like some sort of status quo change. I mean, yeah, I imagine like Perry would be off with like other characters, because if like Milo. Zack and Melissa are going to be interacting with, like, Phineas, Ferb, Candace, and their friends. I imagine Perry would be off with... Perry and Doofenshmirtz would be off with, um... Like, the bot characters. But it's kind of weird, because... It seems like, judging from, like, the missing Milo trailers and stuff, that... The Milo and bot plot lines, especially because, you know, Cavendish and Dakota know Milo... That they're all gonna be connected. So, I wonder how they're gonna do that. Or are they gonna, like, do yet another memory wipe thing? Uh, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Uh, God. Wait a minute. Oh my god, there's like three DreamWorks faces in this. <laughs> there's three DreamWorks faces. Got Candace, Melissa, and Zack. Oh my gosh. Def I guess I really do want to know what they have planned for this. It's like, I'm probably repeating myself by this point, but what are they going to achieve with this? Like, I definitely feel like they've got a reason for this, and I am definitely curious that they're doing this so early, because I guess I was personally a little worried about this happening, believe it or not, because... I guess, to put it simply, I was worried that, I guess I'm worried, like, even if Milo Murphy's Law is going to always, is going to be, you know, pretty good and all that, it is always going to live in the shadow of Phineas and Ferb, and I'm, I guess a part of me is a bit worried that, you know, stuff like this happening so soon is only going to further that, but it's like, on one hand, like, on one hand, I am worried whether this, you know, will, they can definitely affect Milo at all. But, 
on the other hand, it's just I'm just so happy to see these characters mm-hmm. again. These characters that I love so much. And it's just like, yay. Let's see, is there anything else I can mention? Oh, yeah, there's like, yeah, they do mention about how to like put lots of like references and stuff to Phineas and Ferb because it's in the same universe. I, and I guess I have been a little worried with it, you know, they overdo that and whether that's gonna sort of like overshadow what Milo is trying to do, but I don't know, we live in a, uh, yeah, we don't really know what they're gonna do, I guess for now we have to just watch Missing Milo, which already, which, which that alone looks pretty exciting, I saw the teaser that just came out today and it looks pretty cool, but I mean, like, this I was in comparison to this. I mean, like, I can't literally cannot focus on anything else right now. It's just the way that my mind works. If I'm obsessed with something, it's all I can think about. But yeah, I really do hope this is going to be great and that they're going to be planning something really interesting with this, especially if the they're implying that this arc is, this story arc and Milo is leading to this, so yeah, pretty cool stuff, I guess I'll wrap up now, Noddy is out, peace.